Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Chris, back again with the Ancient Scholar. I apologize, it's been a few days. I have unfortunately uh, had uh, gotten the flu, and I did a couple of videos while I was sick, and I ended up um, getting uh, getting worse, so it put me out of action for a little while. Um, so I'm back, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, but what to, today what I'd like to talk about is something a little little different than physics, and, and that is uh, something uh, related to uh, some things we're covering in class, and there are a few people having a diff some difficulty with the concepts. So what I wanted to do is I really wanted to kind of uh, go over this in, in, in video format, and that way it's there for them to use, and it's also there for anybody who wants to use that. And that really is this, this idea of the 12 lead ECG, monitoring the heart, the 12 lead ECG, and more specifically, how do I localize different changes? So let's just go ahead and familiarize ourselves with uh, some of the changes that we find um, on the ECG, um, or EKG if you're, you're German. Okay, so the ECG. So the, the big changes that we're worried about, and, and this is in, in reference to identifying Q coronary syndromes, the big changes that we're worried about are um, ST depression, ST depression, ST elevation, and pathologic Q waves. Pathological Q waves. So let's just go ahead and break these down if, if we can real quick. And we'll go ahead and talk about ST uh, depression first. Uh, ST depression, so if you look at your um, ECG, and uh, we'll just go ahead and look at a normal uh, waveform. And I'm assuming you guys are, are familiar with the, the, the normal, uh, most of your, your normal val your, your normal intervals and so on. Um, you have a first bump there known as a P wave. And that generally will uh, sig signifies uh, firing of the SA, the sinoatrial node, and the uh, the uh, wave of depolarization as it transitions uh, through the intranodal pathways and, and the atria. And then you have a little pause, and then you have your first downward deflection that's called your Q wave, and um, <clears throat> your R wave is the upward deflection. Your S wave is the downward deflection after the R wave, and then your T wave. Uh, of course, the QRS complex, as we call it, it signifies the wave depolarization as it moves through the ventricles, and the T wave signifies ventricular repolarization, and that, of course, is, is uh, the sodium-potassium ATPase pump uh, working to reestablish the resting membrane potential. Uh, this is done by uh, pumping potassium back into the cell and uh, sodium back out of the cell against their gradients. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we also have a couple of intervals. You have your what's called your, your PR interval, and that is basically uh, the interval from beginning of the P wave to beginning of the QRS wave. Um, of course, you do want a little pause after your P wave uh, because basically the impulse is um, stalled, if you will, slightly at the AV node and that allows uh, the H it allows time for the atria to contract and fill the ventricles of the blood or to preload the ventricles and you know, of course you talked about the Frank Starling's uh, mechanism of a contraction and preloading of ventricles and how important that is for cardiac output. So these are your normal intervals, uh, not necessarily normal intervals, but this is normally what your uh, QRS complex or your PQRST complex should look like. Uh, let's just go ahead and talk about uh, the three things that we can find, and that that is uh, ST depression. Uh, so when your ST segments become depressed, uh, you, you are going to have something that uh, will look like this. That is an inverted T wave. QRS, something possibly even like that. Um, again, you have a depressed or inverted T wave. This can mean many things, but in a lot of cases, what we uh, what we look at it as meaning is ischemia. This is a uh, this is a, a classic um, indication of myocardial ischemia. 
That means that the tissue is not getting as much um, perfusion as it should. It is becoming deprived of oxygen and is becoming ischemic. It's not dying. It's not infarcting necessarily, but at this point is becoming ischemic and is not particularly happy. Now, ST depression can also be due to certain medications like digoxin, for example, can produce um, a care, what they call an ice cream scoop depression pattern. Um, ST depression can also uh, be the manifestation of what's known as a reciprocal change where I have ST elevation in certain leads and then in leads opposite of those, those leads I will get depression and, and we, we call that a reciprocal change. ST depression can also indicate the presence of a certain kind of heart attack is a very special kind of heart attack and that's something known as a non-STEMI or a non-ST elevation MI used to be known as a non-Q wave MI um, and, and, and again that's a very special type of what we call an acute coronary syndrome uh, but generally speaking we can look at this as, as meaning some sort of ischemia occurring okay so ST depression is ischemia generally speaking of course and then we can move on to ST elevation and this is an elevated ST segment so I have my P wave here my QRS complex and then I have the QRS complex beginning to kind of meld or blend in to the T wave so you can see I do not have return of return to the baseline uh, before I have my T wave and this is ST elevation. ST elevation is a characteristic finding for injury. So at this point, I actually have injury to the myocardium. And this is generally um, very consistent with an acute coronary syndrome known as ST elevation myocardial infarction or STEMI. This is uh, sort of the bad one. This is the, the kind of uh, acute coronary syndrome that we don't like to see we generally have to intervene fairly, fairly aggressively. Uh, ST elevation uh, can also be manifested in, in uh, uh, certain types of injury. Uh, perhaps I have a, some sort of a traumatic event, a myocardial contusion. Um, ST elevation can be the result of certain um, uh, blocks. Right? For, for example, a bundle branch block can manifest itself as, as um, a falsely elevated ST segment. But generally speaking, ST elevation is characteristic of injury. And then the last, but certainly not least, is something known as a pathological Q wave. And a pathological Q wave, normally my Q waves are very small. Once my, but what will happen is sometimes I'll have a Q wave that becomes very large. Uh, I believe greater than one third to one half the entire length of the QRS. What that indicates, typically, a pathological Q wave, is its necrosis. It indicates death of myocardial, myocardial uh, tissue, its necrosis. So when you see ST elevation and pathological Q waves, we know that not only is a heart being injured, but I already have dead tissue that is not functioning. Now, as a person heals from a myocardial um, infarction, the depression and the elevation can go away. However, dead tissue never heals, and the pathologic Q waves remain. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut it off here. That's the end of just the basic stuff that we're looking at to identify an acute coronary syndrome. Next, we'll talk about the coronary artery anatomy and uh, talk about localizing these changes on the 12-lead ECG. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Take care.